The next time period identified by archaeologists is called the Bronze Age, and obviously it is identified by the appearance of bronze artifacts. So like with the other periods we've talked about, the Bronze Age starts at different times in different areas of Europe. So in the Aegean, we see it at around 6,000 BP, and into the rest of the Europe by 5,000 BP and ends around 2,700 BP. Now, during the Bronze Age, we are at the height of henge building. So, lots and lots of the circular types of megalithic monuments being built. We see increasing population and permanent field agriculture, which means now they are clearing some fields and starting to use them over and over and over again. This does lead to increasing conflict. Uh, we start to find settlements in defensive positions. We see an expansion of trade. So bronze becomes kind of the big trade item after about 4,000 BP. So from the Mediterranean societies, we start to see bronze jewelry being produced, uh, bronze weapons, and something called craters, K-R-A-T-E-R-S, which are big bronze urns that were primarily holding liquids like wine. To the Mediterranean, for like from Northern Europe and so forth, we see people sending furs and raw materials, again, in exchange for bronze material. So bronze functions as a currency in Europe. We find it buried with the dead and offered to the gods. It becomes a wealth display. We see hoarding of bronze items, and then these were often exchanged for necessities. We see a widespread commonality of behavior, so some common ideals start to pop up across Europe. Um, and this pops up in this kind of same types of weapons that we see, the drinking vessels. We see horses and wheeled vehicles emerge. Uh, textiles, again, all somewhat similar, and amber necklaces. Now, towards the late Bronze Age, around 3300 BP through 2700 BP, we see a culture emerge referred to as the urn field. So again, thinking about how creative archaeologists are in naming things, you can kind of tell what they found. They found a lot of urns in fields. And here what we're actually talking about are burial urns. So the dead were cremated, placed in these urns, and then buried in cemeteries, hence urn fields. So we do see an indication of status differences in these cemeteries, uh, some of the urns are buried and covered with a small mound or a barrow and have rich grave goods. Well, what this is suggesting is we're seeing some changes in the beliefs in the afterlife. So the physical body is not needed in the afterlife. And so possibly what we're seeing is the emergence of an idea of spirit, or at least we're starting to see the first material manifestations, which sounds kind of strange, of this idea of spirit. Now, Urnfield culture are the most likely ancestors of the Celts, who dominated Iron Age Europe, which emerged around 2900 BP. Again, some variability, but usually the arrival of the Romans is a good indication that the Iron Age has, uh, or a group has entered into the Iron Age. Now, iron making was first discovered in Turkey around 4000 BP, and they monopolized this technique. They really kind of hoarded the technology or kept it secret for as long as possible. It did tend to give them a little bit of an increase in military advantage. Um, and it helped them not only with better weapons, but with better agricultural tools. Now, they're pretty good about keeping it secret for about a thousand years, but around 3000 BP, we do start to see it kind of leak out of Turkey, again, and it's widespread in Europe by 2900 BP. This is when we see the Sumerians infiltrate from the Pontic Steppe, again, north of the Black Sea. And in the Pontic Steppe, what we're starting to see is quite a bit of strife and a great movement of people, so hence the infiltration into Europe proper. They brought a superior horse stock to Europe. It was faster and it was stronger, and it soon became the status marker, particularly of the Celtic rulers. So the Celts, also known as the Celtoi, 
the Sanones and the Boy. So there are quite a few different names. We prim primarily use Celt. That's something that was um, given to us by the Romans. Uh, the Celtoi is what uh, the Greeks called the Celts. And some texts claim that the Sanones and the Boy are names that they called themselves. Again, emerging from the Urnfield culture, but really considered barbarians by the Romans in particular. Um, their social system was based on warrior prowess and I think probably this kind of negative barbarian idea really emerged from the fact that the Celts invaded Rome in 2390 BP and actually sacked the place so they weren't that popular with the Romans but just to get an idea here's a quote from a Roman council on the invading Celts we have drawn our swords against wild beasts whose blood we must shed or spill our own so you can see they weren't real popular with the Romans. Unfortunately, a lot of what we know about the Celts comes from the Romans, but we do have to take that with a grain of salt. Now, the first identifiable Celtic culture is the Hallstatt, which emerged in Austria between 2900 to 2450 BP. It's associated with widespread use of warrior gear. Uh, so that long sword that we kind of associate with them emerges then. Um, we also see you know, specialized horse tackle emerged during this time frame. Salt and iron mining seemed to be kind of the basis of the economy, um, but they were fr farmers and they were doing quite a bit of training, or trading, excuse me. Uh, status we do see in grave goods. We do see most of the status markers in the form of Mediterranean goods. So here is a burial at you can see a recreation. The individual was found laid out on this kind of long bed. You can see it right here as well, the actual artifact. You can see some of the craters and a lot of the different kinds of pots and so forth. So again, status markers coming from the Mediterranean. And here's some of the jewelry that was found, long sword, and some of the other types of artifacts. So it's kind of interesting. It's one of the first unicorn or unicycles to uh, be found in prehistory. Kind of the Celtic culture as the Celtic picture that comes to mind when you hear the word is really associated with the Latine culture, 2450 to 2000 BP. So this is the Celts as we think of them today. It has that very distinctive art style with the kind of floral, abstract floral motif here, uh, the very detailed kind of iron work, and even here in this sword sheath. Some interesting jewelries emerged during this time frame as well, quite lavish in nature. Um, but again, these in intricate designs that are distinctive of the Celts kind of emerges during this Latine. This is also when we start to see the f emergence of the Druids. And the Druid means knowledge of the oak. That's kind of the closest translation we can come to it. Our Druids were revered within society and they had very high status. Uh, they were probably even higher, at least equal, with the chiefs. Now there were, or the warrior chiefs, I should say. There were three classes of druids. There were bards, augurers, and the druid proper. And the bards were the initiates, and during this time frame they learned all of the poetry and the history of the Celts. So it was an oral tradition, at least that we know. We don't find any writing from this time period from the Celts. Uh, either they didn't have it, or it was on a medium that didn't survive. Uh, augurers were seers, it could uh, foresee the future. Druid proper were the conservators of ancient wisdom. And it took about 20 years to become a druid proper, so it wasn't anything that you could just decide to do and then a couple days later be a druid proper. Now the druids ruled over sacrificial